Redemption arcs. I think you're <laughs> right in the mic. In, in the need of a good redemption arc. <laughs> uh, so redemption arcs. Redemption arcs. What? What's your favorite redemption arc? That's, I guess that's a pretty easy basic question. Yeah. It, it would be really easy of me to say Zuko. From, that, from Avatar, Avatar The Last, Last Airbender. Yeah. Like, that's just such an easy answer. He has one of the best. He really does. But it, it, it would not, it would be easy of you to say it, but I would understand. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I think. <laughs> this is going to sound weird and dumb, okay? But I really like the redemption arc of the monarch from the Venture Bros. I've never seen it. Oh my god, it's what okay, like first of all, for an adult animation, yeah. it is on story storytelling level of like Marvel movies. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. fantastic. I love the Venture Bros. Um, the Monarch starts off as the main bad guy. He is the arch nemesis to Dr. Venture. The thing is, he's an idiot. <laughs> um, he's like not good at being a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And he's a bad guy for like so long, but like no matter what, you kind of love him. Yeah. You love the Monarch. He's just like, I am the Monarch! He's like, <laughs> he's like the world's worst supervillain, but like, I don't know, he succeeds sometimes. I, I feel, yeah. And then like, Something about it, he finds out late in the series, spoilers, um, he finds out late in the series that his father was secretly a superhero. Okay. Um, and so he decides that because his father was a superhero, he takes over the mantle and becomes uh, becomes the superhero. It's called the, the Blue Morpho, which is a type of butterfly. Yeah. Um, uh, and he like becomes the superhero and through that becomes a better person. Okay. And like, I don't know, it's just, his, his story arc is just very interesting. To me, yeah. And I love yeah. it. You know what I was thinking about as you were saying that? Mm. Cause, Cause it sounds like in that situation, that character, has a redemption arc and then continues to exist after the arc. Oh yeah, no, he it drives me insane yeah. when redemption's arc end at the arc. For example, one of our favorite Star Wars characters, Kylo Ren. Oh my god, he yes! Has a redemption arc and then it's and then he dies. Useless. Spoilers. <laughs> edit that. If you haven't seen, if you didn't, if you don't know by now. But like and it's the same thing with like uh, Boromir. Yeah, in Lord of the Rings. Boromir gets a two second redemption he, arc he, and he dies immediately. Yeah, he gets a little bit of a redemption dip and then he gets that arc and then he's dead. Yeah, uh, it's, and I think that's a reason why we like Zuko so much. Cause Zuko's still around. Yeah. We get more Zuko after Zuko is redeemed. We get the chance to see what his redemption arc brought upon the world. Exactly, you know what's kind of different with Zuko than like other redemption arc villains? What? Is like, usually when the villain gets their redemption, they will go off and watch wander alone. Yeah. But like the thing is that wandering alone was part of Zuko's redemption. Yeah. And we got to see the wandering alone, which is why I feel like, which is why I feel like he's there after. Yeah. Like, cause we, we get more Zuko and we, we, he already had his redemption. And, and I and I also think I appreciate Zuko's redemption arc a little bit more too, because you get to see him kind of struggle with it. Yeah. He, he goes kind of like, ah, should I? Yeah, I don't know. He, he, the boy has anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, he gets up there and he's like, hey, Zuko here. <laughs> Just like, oh man. Like, I've felt like that. Uh, yeah. yeah. You, you relate more to Zuko after he's been redeemed. Right. But it's not to say that he's not relatable with no, the yeah. whole like, uh, no, I want my honor back. Yeah. They they flesh him out pretty well. They do. Um, how, I don't know. Like, there's so many good redemption arcs in the world and in and, and, like literature. I wish Kylo Ren's was better. I wish Kylo Ren's was better. Another example would be Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. He, he dips down. He becomes Darth Vader. But then at the end, he gets that little <laughs> bloop redeemed. Yeah, and, and then he's and, dead. And then he's dead. Hon honestly, it would be so much better if we could have a bad guy in a movie go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> always die it's like just put him in you know what i'm gonna bring it back to this we were talking about before recording you know what does that really well what um the walking dead oh yeah how he doesn't allow rick just doesn't kill negan yeah he just puts him in jail okay and like lets him rot there yeah but where i'm at right now i'm not done with season nine but it looks like they're kind of trying to redeem mm -hmm. negan through judith a little bit okay 
it's Inter- weird. Interesting. It's weird. How would you uh, write a redemption arc? How would I write a redemption arc? Well, <sighs> I know it's a that's a complicated question. It, it is a complicated question. Are, I, are are there any are there any main ingredients? Main ingredients? You gotta have the the bad guy, of course. Right. You gotta have them do something seemingly irredeemable. Okay. To write a good redemption arc, you they've got to do something that's like bad, bad. Yeah. Um, like, okay, you know what? Here's a little exercise. I'm gonna say how I would do it. You say how you would do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. How w- or uh, how would you write a redemption arc for Negan? Negan does oh, some God. of the most irredeemable shit out of any. He killed Glenn. Yeah. And Abraham. Yeah. So how would you redeem him? Shit, I don't know. After everything he did to uh, to uh, why am I Daryl? Yeah. I almost, I almost just said Norman Reedus. Just do everything he did to Norman Reedus. <laughs> everything to make him wander off and deliver packages for the rest of his life. Death Stranding's a great <laughs> game, man. Um, God, I don't really know. I would I would start. Well, I mean, I would start by making it to where they really push up the connection to his wife and his backstory. Yeah. Like, so uh, our redemption arc almost has to loop back into an origin story at some point. It does. You have to know what, that, where we talked about last episode with villains. Yeah. Um, and about relatable villains. In order to have a redemption arc, your villains need to be relatable. Okay, yeah. They need to have that thing in their backstory where you would look at that and be like, shit, I can see how you turned out to be like this. Yeah. They would also have to be that morally gray, or like, they couldn't be the just, they couldn't be the Dark Lord. There is no redemption no, for Sauron. There is no redemption for Sauron. Um, and even in other cases, like Voldemort, there's no redemption for Voldemort. There's no. some There's some of those Dark Lords, definite evil people. Those are like, uh, I'd call Hitler level evil. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, there's no redeeming that. Right. But so, okay, so for in, for in order for your villain to have that redemption arc, they can they have to be bad. Right. They have to be pretty bad for a really good one. Mm-hmm. But like they can't. There's a line that they can't cross. Yeah. Th- like yeah. an irredeemable line. Yeah. Okay. And, and usually in fantasy and literature, that line seems to people don't cross that line without the help of magic, or, to, with, yeah. or without the help of some. I death guess in on. Star Wars, it's just space magic. Yeah, it's just the Force is just space magic. It it's really is. The you're wheel. not special, Lucas. We know what you're onto. That camera's dying. It is. Oh, it is. I'm sorry, Troy. Um, Where were we? Um, we were talking about space magic. <laughs> it's just the weave in space. It really um, is. Okay, so yeah, they can, they have to. Your villain has to. He, he can't. He has to be as close to that line as possible because for, I feel like, it, with the exception of maybe Star Wars, yeah, who's all about redemption arcs. Mm-hmm. Once you cross that line into like magically dark lord, you're kind of fucked. There's no redeeming. Sidious. Right. The, the they, Emperor could not be redeemed, but Darth Vader could. Right, right. He was... See, that that's the thing. I think we should call that, like, the Darth Vader line. Yeah. Is, like, that's... Because... Because... Darth cause, Vader was complicit in genocide yeah, of a um, culture. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, he wasn't completely taken over by the dark magic. No, he knew you know? what he was doing was wrong, and... It, like, it killed him to do it. Yeah, Because, yeah. like, in the Expanding Universe, we, like, really find out Darth Vader was depressed for, like, the entirety yeah. of his existence. I almost, he he um, did not like doing what yeah, he did. Understandably so, he, you know? He got... It's like... Anakin Skywalker got in for the right reasons and did the wrong stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like that. The Darth Vader line. The Darth Vader line. It's the... It's you the, heard it here, folks. The Darth Vader line That's... is the line that you can get to before... Like, if you cross that line, you can't have a redemption arc. Yeah. Okay. But if, if but you want your... You want your villain of you, your writing, your mm. world building, your LARP, your D&D session to be as close to that line as possible if you want them to have a redemption <laughs> Here, here's a question for you. Yeah. Is Paxson redeemable? Yeah, totally. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I have it written in that my villain in my homebrew is 
redeemable. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if Solomon is. Yeah. I I want see I want my players to be able to have like the thoughts like should we redeem him? Yeah. And then like I think at the end I want him to just be too far gone. Like maybe maybe like two sessions ago he was yeah. and like thinking about before be, like before this happened he might have been redeemable yeah but because you guys didn't he's too far gone it, it almost feels like one of those things where you could put all of the relatability into a villain mm-hmm. um you could be like oh my villain had a family that he loves and yeah. had all of this tragedy and everything but eventually they just go over the darth vader line it's like it's it's something to think about is like i I love making my players feel like heroes and legends oh, yeah. of like the, the the badasses that they are. Yeah. But sometimes it's okay for them to not save the day. Uh, absolutely. Like uh, mine just went through the mines. Mm-hmm. You've been through that adventure. You know at the end that the the guy who is the the Wendigo, yeah. he turns back into a human. You guys get him towards the edge of the mine and fucking blows up. He, it, yeah. like blows up the dynamite my my players they felt that i'd like i knew i was really testy with that because yeah. i knew that on one hand it would give them more development yeah. it would give them something tragic that happened on the job on the other hand like they really tried hard to save them and, and it's one of those things <laughs> like, I, i'm thinking back to when i played that adventure yeah um, if anybody, for whatever reason, is watching this podcast, has somehow listened to that adventure, yeah, roll to attack. That one never got uploaded. I don't no, think. I don't think it did. Um, that was one of the first times that me, as a player, has mm-hmm. had to go back to a quest giver. Yeah. Because technically, that's all that lady was in that town. She was like, "Can you go find my husband?" Yeah. Like, she was like, Get, "Bring me my husband's body." That was one of the first times where I, as a player, has had to come back to a quest giver and say. We fucked up. <laughs> yeah. And like, that's the thing that was so powerful. And that next scene, when Ricky was unconscious, yeah. I had Arizona cry. Yeah, because dude. Because that just felt correct. Because she was overwhelmed. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. So, how, how do we get on this subject? Um, how is this connected? <laughs> we were talking about redeemable villains. And I was talking about my, how it's okay for my players not to win. Yeah, yeah. And I think, like, the ideal like win that will be in my players heads when they're done with this is like is that we get solomon to stop doing what he's doing and not have to kill him okay because um like there's a lot more backstory for him yeah that like they're gonna discover but like i kind of want them to not yeah not redeem solomon it, it comes down to excuse me um kind of like we talked about with villains tailoring your villain to your audience Mm -hmm. you you almost have to do the same thing with a redemption arc including that villain you do you know because on one hand you could uh if your players even want to try a redemption arc Mm -hmm. if your players want just a bad guy to beat up give them an irredeemable villain yeah you know yeah if your audience is a little doesn't want as complicated as stories give them Give them an irredeemable villain. Give them, give them the ultimate evil. Give them the Dark Lord. Give yeah. them over the Darth Vader line. Yeah. But like, if your players want that complicated, like emotional interactions, yeah. Or if your book audience wants that complicated, like, oh, well, he's a good guy. That mm-hmm. kind of moral um, questions that those villains tend to pose. Mm-hmm. Give them a redeemable villain. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I got one for you. We were both very big fans of Game of Thrones. Yes. Out of, I'm gonna give you three. Okay. Out of Joffrey. Um, Kill him. <laughs> <laughs> not redeemable. Um, uh, oh my god, why can I not remember? It's been so long since we've watched Game of Thrones. Uh, what's Tyrion uh, and Cersei and, ja- and Jamie? Jamie's father? Uh, Tywin? Tywin. Tywin. Out of Lannister. Joffrey, Tywin Lannister, or Cersei. Out of those three Lannisters. Yeah. Which one of them is the most redeemable? Cersei. Really? Absolutely. Okay. Because she has that such key and strong, relatable... uh, I love my kids. I love my kids. I love my family. That is such a key and relatable aspect Mm -hmm. that I feel like almost anybody that can relate to that in within the story... Ooh, nice um, catch. It's a little too heavy for it. (sighs) A genius. Modern... Problems require modern, modern solutions. solutions. We're getting Gandalf pipes, dude. 
Oh, definitely. I'm so excited. So, um, uh, no, so, absolutely, Cersei. Okay. Because like anybody within that realm can go. You love your kids, don't you? Don't be doing this. Yeah. And just that will will usually click in somebody's head. Yeah. But while Tywin and who was the other one you said? Tywin Joffrey. and Joffrey. Fuck Joffrey. Yeah, oh yeah, fuck Joffrey. Just like just fuck him. He was just a dick to be a dick. Um, but Tywin, I feel like is a little. His motives are a little less relatable. Really? Uh, yeah. I see. I think a little differently. Okay. I think uh, so. The Lannisters. I'm gonna say it here, the Lannisters are my favorite Game of the Thrones Lannisters family. The Lannisters are my favorite. Oh, okay, awesome, yeah. cool. Then I'm not going to be judged. The Lannisters are my favorite yeah. Game of Thrones family. They're my favorite house. Shit. All right. So you have a different way of thinking. I have a different way of thinking about Tywin Lannister. I The Lannisters are my favorite Game of Thrones house. Same. Um, uh, I think Tywin Lannister's motivations is he wants to make his house on top. He okay. he wants his family to be in their rightful place. I feel what you mean. I, I don't know. He 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 wants his he Tywin was, grew up with his father was the worst head of the Lannister house mm -hmm. ever. Um uh, and Tywin grew up with his house being the laughing stock, with the Lannisters being like the the joke. Yeah. Until uh the reigns of Castamere. Yeah. Um, and then, so I think Tywin's motivation is to make sure his house will never be laughed at again. Right. So, and that's more like ha having pride in your family. Okay. okay. So like, that's that's pretty relatable. Like, when, yeah. Cause there are people, I know people who are just like, yeah, my family has from blah, 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 blah. Being yeah. proud of your family. Okay. I, I don't know. I almost. I feel you're right. Yeah, that is a relatable trait. But I feel like out of those three characters, love for your love for your family, as yeah. opposed to wanting to elevate your family, is more relatable. Oh no, I agree with you. Okay. Cersei's the most redeemable. Oh okay. Tywin's just my favorite. <laughs> That's fair. I, Ty, okay, this is a little side raid. Okay. Ty, Ty, every Lannister except for Cersei. Yeah. Is my favorite character from Game of Thrones. Damn. Even well, Joffrey's technically a Baratheon. Fuck him. Yeah. He doesn't. All right. Him. Yeah. No, I I feel Jamie, you. Tyrion, like Tywin. I love Tywin, dude. I, I um, love Jamie. Yeah, Jamie. Redemption arcs. Re oh my god! So we tying it back. Like, Jamie, it, it drives me crazy, but I also love it because mm -hmm. of its story building. Um, he gets a redemption arc almost. Yeah. In in the movies, I'm not sure about the books. I haven't read the books or the movies. The show. <laughs> um, but he. he yeah. This is this is so no, you, you want to know you want to know um, where the books leave off? Hmm. Jon Snow lying dead in the snow. Okay. But, like when he was stabbed. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I love how close he gets to the full arc, oh, and then God. it's ripped out. And like it at, really it. Um, on one hand, the, I I get everyone's complaints with it uh -huh. because like it it didn't feel real or rational. That like he went through everything he did and would still go. It didn't feel like he had crossed the Darth Vader line. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I love Jamie Lannister's redemption arc. Mm -hmm. It shows he tiptoed that line in the first episode when we see him fucking his sister and throwing a young boy out of a tall tower. Yeah, those will do it. Yeah. yeah. Like the, he's on that line. Mm -hmm. and, but and he he comes back. He comes back only for him to just. Rocket right through that line. And I love that. Really? I hate it, but I love it. I mm -hmm. hate it because Jamie is my favorite character. Yeah. I want him to have the redemption arc. I want him to be the good guy, so I have, have I stop having to explain to people why why Jamie is your my favorite. favorite character. Um, but like from a story writing perspective, what yeah. a, what a good way to get your audience invested. Yeah. What a good way to really hook and like you'll get you'll lose some people. But, oh, like, definitely. But like I don't know. I just, for me, it, I feel like it's such a great hook mm -hmm. if you like analyze it a little bit more. Ta taking his redemption arc away, or the, is yeah. the redemption arc itself a hook? Ripping out his redemption arc at the last second. Uh, so you're talking like hooking him in, and then just yeah. So like because of that redemption arc and mm -hmm. how it ended. Yeah. We're talking about. It. I guess so. Yeah. You know, like what a great way to get people talking about your story and yeah. your stuff, and you're gonna get people that say that sucks. But then you're gonna get idiots like me, who are like, 
that's kind of cool. It is, okay, <laughs> you know? so here's the thing. Even with all of its problems, uh, Game of, the last season of Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. I still love it. Yeah, same. Yeah. It's still great. Same. It's still Game of Thrones. There are some complaints I have. Yeah, oh, obviously, definitely. But surprisingly enough, uh, Jamie Lannister's lack of a, of a closure to a character arc is not one of my complaints. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, I get no, that. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of, uh, honestly, now thinking about it, that's kind of what I wanted to do with Solomon. Exactly. Is to, like, get them to that point where they're thinking, can he? Yeah. Is it? Is it real? And then, nope. Nope, he's, he's not. He, he's too far gone. He's over the line. Jamie, Jamie Lannister was too far gone. Everybody thought he wasn't. No. We, and I love that. And especially Brienne. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Brienne deserves so much better. She de Brienne deserves... Everything. Yeah. Okay. She yeah. does not deserve to live in that world. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. What What do you think? Would you rather participate, play in, read, whatever, consume a story with an irredeemable villain or a redeemable one? I like me personally. Uh -huh. I like the idea of it being a redeemable one okay. because I I'm a big believer in like second chances. Yeah. I, I believe everybody deserves, everybody fucks up. Yeah. And so I believe that everybody deserves another chance. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I so even Darth Vader himself, I'm on the, yeah, he, Luke shouldn't have like just gone and killed him. Yeah. Uh, Luke did the right thing by trying to redeem him. Okay. I, I, I'm a very big proponent in that. Yeah. Which is why I loved Kylo Ren, dude. Kylo Ren was yeah. fucking awful. For he sure. killed Han Solo. A lot more people. And a lot of people. <laughs> it's still just too many people. And but he did get redeemed. He did. And then boop. Yeah. A lot of people think he still did it. But I'm like, eh, I mean yeah, within the lore he did. Yeah. Within the actual <laughs> story. Um, okay. It's funny, I, I have had more fun mm -hmm. in campaigns that have an irredeemable villain. Yeah. That have a dark lord. Yeah. And I think that's, you know what I honestly think it is? And this is going to sound kind of pretentious. Mm -hmm. It's because I write so many redeemable villains. And yeah. I write, and I write so many, like, complicated, like, gray <laughs> characters who are like, oh, is he evil? I don't know. Well, he killed that guy, but he also does charity. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, I I write so much of that mm -hmm. that it was refreshing. <laughs> just to, to, just to have a bad game. guy. Yeah, he's, he's bad. You know, yeah. I could turn off my self-analytical person <laughs> mode and I could just go, I'm just gonna apply axe until dead. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh man, well like and that brings us back to talking about villains. Yeah. It's Which just if you haven't seen that episode. Yeah, check it you out. You should go back and check it out. I love I love redemption arcs. Yeah. I love I the idea of a good redemption. Because I think I feel it because I personally and like the product of a redemption arc. Yeah. I was like a terrible, awful person in like high school. We all were in high school. Like, <laughs> like well, like, yes, high school, high school yeah. and a little bit into my adult age. Yeah. Until I went through some shit that just fundamentally changed who I was as a person. Yeah, I feel it. And I, that, I think that brings it back to relatable villains mm -hmm. is like, I'm the product of a redemption arc. If yeah. it worked for me, why couldn't it work for that guy? It's almost a comfort to people. It, it's, it is comfort. To see redemption arcs. It's validating. Yeah. It's like it's like when you listen to sad music while you're sad, and yeah. it validates you feeling sad. Yeah. Okay. It helps you feel a little better. Yeah. I had another point. I was like, <laughs> trying to remember it. Um. God. It's gone. It's gone. It's floating you got, up. got its redemption arc and now it's dead. <laughs> now it's dead. <laughs> uh, we, you were just talking about something else. Fuck. Okay, rewind. Rewind. <laughs> a couple steps. Uh, you. I would rather have a redeemable villain than an irredeemable villain. Before yeah. that was... It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> I, just, I don't it's remember. floated off into the wind. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Like, I, I enjoy, yeah, no, I, I yeah, don't know. No, I don't know. I enjoy redeemable villains, but it depends on the media. Yeah. It depends on how I'm consuming the story. And I think that the same can be said for anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that ties it back to if you are a story writer, you have to think about what kind of uh, media you are presenting your story in. Mm -hmm. If you're committing it, if you're presenting it in a LARP, mm -hmm. everybody at LARP loves fucking puzzles. Of course they do. So give them a redeemable villain. 
Yeah. If you're playing D and D with a bunch of guys, <laughs> how could we redeem Petrus? <laughs> but, but if you were gonna do like a D and D game, and you knew your players just kind of wanted a dungeon crawl, mm -hmm. present them with an irredeemable dark lord. Yeah, I guess and, so. And you know, it's the same thing if you're writing a book. If you're writing for like younger kids, maybe or something, mm -hmm. give them a dark lord. They, they don't. They're young. They're stupid. They, they, they don't analyze. really necessarily care about the complexity yeah. of humanity. Yeah, you know. But if you're writing for like um, a young adult or an adult, you know, let them think a little bit. Yeah. You know, kind of like how Avatar did for us. Yeah. Yeah, because when we were young kids, yeah, we got Zuko. We also we got Zuko, but we also got Ozai, who kind of was over that Dark Lord line. He was over the Dark Lord. Well, I, how did? Ozai get redeemed. He didn't. Oh, okay. that's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, we got, we had that irredeemable Dark Lord. Yeah, but we I get we got them both ways. We got them both. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like that's we, pretty nice. Avatar slaps. After go watch what, Avatar. What a good show. <laughs> <laughs> go watch Avatar. Then all of our episodes will make so much more sense. <laughs> we talk about it a lot. Yeah. And also, I mean, it's the whole show is kind of about redemption arcs. Yeah. Aang, Aang is redeeming himself for running away, yeah. abandoning his duty. Um, uh, Iroh is redeeming himself for failing his child. Oh my god, we have to talk about this. We have to talk about Iroh. We have to Iroh. talk about Iroh. Because I, I watched a video from Hello Future Me. Yeah, love um, that guy. Love the guy. Mm -hmm. And he talked about how Iroh's redemption arc did not complete until Zuko's was complete. Yeah. Because through Zuko, Iroh feels like he needs to make up for his crimes. But he can't. He's too old. He can't yeah. go off and save the world. But what he can do is make up for the fatherhood that he lost. Oof, yeah. You know? And it, he, he failed his son because he, he was leading him down that path that Iroh was a part of yeah. at the time. And by leading him down a different path, by leading Zuko down a different path, he is... In actuality, redeeming himself for failing his son. It's a, it's like this weird like Uncle Iroh's redemption arc starts here, then Zuko starts, and, and they, they meet, and then they meet, and then they're both redeemed, mm -hmm. and it's so beautiful. And yeah. like we talk a lot about Avatar, we do, but it's such a good example, and it's honestly, I think straight, I think it's one of our favorite no oh, examples yeah. of story building. And yeah, it's everything. it's. I am a firm believer that it is one of the best stories ever written. Yeah. Like, right there, I'll put it in there. Yeah. Like, there, as, there as you go. it covers everything that you would need. Yeah. It's just, I love that dual redemption arc. Mm -hmm. And that is such, that is such a unique and complex way to write one. Yeah. Because it's like. That one's isn't complete until the other's is. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's good shit. That is really good shit. Good, good shit. That camera's dying again. Son of a bitch. Wait. Was... It's not dying anymore. I don't know what's going on. These cheap Chinese cameras. There we go. Um, <laughs> so we covered Iroh. We covered Kylo. Mm, we covered Zuko. We covered... They only ended with O's. <laughs> Jamie O. Jamie O. <laughs> Love Jamie O. Jamie O. Uh, we covered Frisbee Jamie now. Lannister. It's another good redemption arc. It could, it could be said the, the T-1000 from Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the second one, he's good. Yeah. His redemption arc was just programming, though. <laughs> they just like, bloop, bloop, bloop. You're good <laughs> they, now. they programmed a redemption yeah, arc in his yeah. head. Yeah, this is really hidden. Yeah? Yeah. When I blink, it takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like yeah. it takes a while. Yeah, you got like, like those lizard <laughs> blinks where like one eye blinks and then the other. <laughs> Or the one where it feels like they're going this way. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, damn. Um, Are you a lizard person? <laughs> you, you know when your eyes feel, you know when your eye slits close yeah, you and you gotta, you gotta lick your eyeball to re-moisturize it. You know when that happens? Gross. <laughs> um, I know you've read the Dungeon Master's Guide. Yes. Is there, I have not. Um, is there any section in there about writing villains? Uh, or is it just apply monster to party? Yeah, the, no, there's some stuff in there that covers it, like, very briefly from what I remember. I haven't, like, read the yeah. Dungeon Master's Guide in fucking forever. Fair enough. Um, but, like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it covers a lot of, like, how to write a villain yeah. in there. But, like, nothing super detailed. Okay. If you, actually, if you want a really good guide on how to write a villain, mm -hmm. um, watch a fucking... 
I cannot remember his name right now. Watch Rune Smith's How to Ride, uh, Ride a Villain yeah. okay. video. It's it it really helped me when I was writing Solomon. Okay, a lot. Cool. Yeah, the Dungeon Master's Guide briefly covers it, but no, the, nothing crazy yeah. is in there. It doesn't really go into the the dynamics of redeeming your villain. Yeah, yeah. So like, if you were to break down a redemption arc, I know we talked earlier about mm -hmm. what are the ingredients. Um, I would say relatable. Relatable villain. Uh, haven't ha have, blah, 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 has not crossed the Darth Vader line. No. Um, how long? What, what about pacing? I would. Is it that, can't be short. Yeah. I think it really depends on what they've done. Okay. It, it depends on what they did for us to be like that's a villain. For um, honestly, I feel like Darth Vader's was too short. Okay. I feel like he wasn't complete, re completely redeemed just because he didn't want to see his son die. Yeah. Because the Sith run off of emotions. Love is an emotion. Yeah. Um, I feel like Darth Vader should have lived and gone to jail. Okay. I feel like he should have had to actually pay for what he did instead yeah. of just dying and becoming a cool sp force ghost. Cool space dad. Like he, re that's all he did. He just <laughs> <laughs> Later. I feel like he didn't. He didn't really. Re he redeemed himself, yes, in the name of the story, but yeah. not to me. Okay, fair enough. And I think that puts me in like the how Katara treated Zuko after Zuko was redeemed. It's like, you've redeemed yourself, but not to me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And don't get me wrong, I love Darth Vader. Yeah. I, I love Star Wars. I just feel like Darth Vader's redemption arc should have been longer for what he did. Okay. Um, but like, say it's like a dude who, this is the movie. Um, the... A woman is walking down a street late at night. A man zips by, grabs her purse, and runs away down an alley and thinks he loses her. Um, uh, he, grabs the, he grabs the money out of the purse and just the cash, not the cards, not anything else, and like throws it out towards the street to be found. Okay. He, she follows him more, and he's got a kid somewhere, and he's like, now I have enough money to get you food. Okay. I think that right there, redeemed. Okay. Just that right there. It depends on what you do. Yeah. His his crime, he stole a purse. Yeah. Redeemed, buying, using that money to buy food for his kid. Okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Uh, I almost feel like though, it, that's a difference of, a lot of villains are written as they are doing... They're doing bad stuff to get good, for yeah. good results. Yeah. It's the ends just by the means. Yeah. But by the perspective of most places, of mm -hmm. most uh, literatures, it's they're doing bad things because they're bad. Yeah. Like, Kylo Ren knew he was on the dark side. Yeah. Yeah, he and, did. And it also, I think a lot of this depends on if there's that third party. I that, guess so, you know, yeah. Like, were they corrupted? Yeah. Because the dark, that's... Is the dark side corrupts. Is there an outside source corrupting you? It, it, your villain, does he have this other party, or is it all internal? With Solomon, it's just grief. Yeah. <laughs> See, with Paxton, it's just, it, it, there's no outside force. Yeah. But I have written villains in the past that are villains because some other evil force, yeah. like black and white, the dark lord <laughs> corrupts the morally gray redeemable character. It kind of depends on if that is an aspect. I, You know? I, I may be bugging. I haven't read the Silmarillion in a long time. Uh -huh. but isn't that kind of what Morgoth does to Sauron? Exactly. He, he just corrupts him. It's the same, it's like y you have to you have to think of if your villain is being influenced by an outside force. Mm -hmm. um, well, so that could be said that like, ev if that means that you're redeemable, mm -hmm. every Sith who's ever lived is redeemable. That's what I mean, though. And, and like, I, I think I'm saying when writing mm -hmm. characters, I think you have to put a lot of thought into that. Oh yeah, because if you were to write a villain and be like, oh, the dark, the most powerful dark spirit, lord of all darkness, shadow, and death, mm -hmm. has corrupted my villain. Yeah. And now my villain's running off and destroying the world. Okay. Uh. How is a, the party supposed to counter the corruption of the Dark Lord of Death and Evil and Destruction unless they have like a, a light? Lord yeah, of like a, you like a, usually it's I have protection from the Lord of Light. Yeah, which is 
on some degrees, just an allegory for Christianity. It is, but um, but like it, it's it's usually I have protection from like the gods of goodness and love yeah. that the villain who was corrupted didn't have. Yeah, because if I went up to the villain who was being corrupted by the Lord of All Darkness and went, "You have a family, remember?" Mm -hmm. I feel like that villain should be like, "I don't care," and then murders a small village because of that outside corruption. So that outside corruption makes them over the line. Yeah. Okay. I believe so. Or like kind of slowly fishing pole thing. Oh, okay. Men, I like that. You know, like they're they're slowly getting them deeper and deeper. Yeah. Because okay. I feel like if you had given Darth Vader several more years under Sith, Sith, mm -hmm. Sidious. Yeah. My brain stopped. Put all those words together. He would have been gone. He would have been gone. That fishing pole would eventually got him over the line. Okay. And it got him to that line. He's what created the line. Exactly. He was who it's named after. It's the, exactly. When I wrote Paxson mm -hmm. originally, he was a servant of a dark lord. Okay. Um, I had a black and white evil villain who's one of his main cronies was Paxson. Okay. Um, and when I was writing him, it felt kind of bland. Okay. I was like, this is easy. So I took away the dark lord and I added relatable content to Paxson. Yeah. And. I feel like that's what writers should really do. Not necessarily word for word, but you should think about how uh, how your redemption arcs are capable of being executed. Because mm -hmm. if Paxton had been under that Dark Lord, there's no redemption arc. I, I was kind of the same way. Yeah. When I first wrote Solomon, he was very much a Strahd von Sarovich, like yeah. Dracula, evil vampire. He was um, uh, very much the, he was the Dark Lord. Mm -hmm. But... Like, I don't know, it, uh, like doing that made me feel like kind of, kind of bored of him. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I get it. But like, I was sitting there like thinking, how is this not, how is this any different from Strahd? Mm -hmm. How is this any different from Dracula? I, 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 it, this isn't, this isn't anything different. Yeah. I was like, okay, fine. What if we made, um, Dracula a pretty much kind of good guy okay. and, um, uh, very morally gray. Yeah. Like, he's, I don't know. I I didn't want to just make another Dracula. I feel you. With, with my, because he is a vampire. Mm -hmm. That's that's the reason he's been alive so long, is because he's a vampire. But I don't want him to be Strahd. Yeah. I gotcha. There's no Barovia. That, that was kind of why I mostly ditched the idea for my Dark Lord. Mm -hmm. Because he was just like Sauron. Yeah. It's... Um, it's is, and is it, it's doing those things, does it make you feel, like, lazy? Kind of. Yeah. Um, and like like I said, there's nothing wrong with writing a Dark Lord characters. We talked about that in the yeah. but if you want that complex, uh, you know, emotional redemption arc, you have to write somebody that's not over that Darth Vader line. Yeah. You, you can't... Yeah, like... <sighs> There's just, you think about it, like, how would you redeem the Emperor? Yeah. You can't. Yeah. There's, there's just no way to do it. It's not, not redeemable. Nobody, uh, I mean, I, I'm the Lord of the Rings guy, apparently, yeah. during this podcast. Nobody at the Council of Elrond said, let's talk to Sauron. Not a <laughs> single person was like, maybe if we try maybe to understand him family. and give him love, yeah, you know, he maybe. will, He if we band together as a community, no one said that. No one said that. No one, yeah. And like, no one, and like, if you were to redeem Sauron, yeah, like, Luke didn't try to redeem the Emperor. No. He appealed to his dad, and granted that might have been the whole like family thing, but you would think a Jedi that is like trained in he would if there was good in the Emperor he would have seen exactly. it exactly mm -hmm. yeah and it's the same way in a lot of the Star Wars games there's there's a lot of characters that like you can't don't have the option to redeem yeah because they're, they're over that line <laughs> you know who did get a rede redemption who? fuck you George Lucas Star Killer. <laughs> yeah yeah Star Killer got a redemption I think that's the point of the game, honestly. We need to figure out a better system. For we really, we really do. We need just like good mics. Hey, hey. subscribe to our Patreon. So <laughs> Give we us can afford a microphones. Professional microphones. Okay, so um, it seems like we both agree. Yeah, uh, redemption arcs are cool. We're pretty cool, and honestly, they're they're not the easiest to do, mm -hmm. but you can do it. You can Anybody, do it. we you can make it done. Yeah, think about the motives. Um, why they're bad in the first place. Yeah. If they think they're bad. Because I know, because like there's a difference between <laughs> thinking you're bad and mm -hmm. doing bad things. You, I, you know, like somebody could. Uh, I'm trying to think how I want to explain this. <laughs> like. 
the if you're on the dark side, yeah, you know you're doing bad shit. Yeah. Even if you're like, I'm doing all of this bad shit because I know there's a good at the end. Mm-hmm. Some characters don't see it that way. You can no. write characters that are like, I'm doing good things. Look at all of the crops I'm gl- growing, not realizing those crops are grown with blood. Yeah. You know, and they're yeah. like, look at all this good I'm doing. And they really believe it. So you kind of have to think about it's, that as well. It's the villain who doesn't realize they're a villain. Exactly. It's um, uh, Far Cry 5, Joseph yeah. Seed. He is the leader of a cult, a doomsday cult. Yeah. But he is legitimately trying to save people from a nuclear doomsday. Fully believes he's doing he the fo- right thing. He believes he is doing God's work. That's yeah. his whole thing. Yeah. It, it's if. It's if the villain can justify the ends as well as the means. It's the it's the crusader theory. Yeah. Like during the crusades, the Christians thought they were doing the right thing. Exactly. But they're They were most certainly not. No, they were not. But they thought they were. Yeah. It's just another aspect to take into when like does writing. your villain justify themselves? Yeah. Do or do does your villain think they're redeemable? That's, That's another thing. Name. Does your villain think that they are redeemable? Yeah. Damn. Okay. Usually, the ones who are redeemable don't. Yeah. And that and that and like, they're the ones that are able to recognize the severity of their crimes. Exactly. And the ones that think like, yeah, I'm redeemable. I yeah. can do good. They they're okay. not redeemable. Okay. I like that. They're usually too far gone. Yeah. If they can't see themselves what they've done, uh-huh. they're not redeemable. They haven't earned it. I like that. I that's there's that's another dope. thing. Your villain has not earned a redemption arc until they can recognize their actions. Yeah, and that, I mean that's usually what causes it. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, it's usually that moment of sitting over the burning villain and going, "Oh my god, what have I done?" When it clicks, mm-hmm. you know, they, they like they have to be able to realize it. Yeah, um, I think that's a good thing for people. I yeah. think it's just life in general. People. You, people who have done bad are not redeemable until they can recognize how bad what they did was yeah. and come to terms with it. Yeah, that's why like one of the strongest things that I like in people mm-hmm. is the mini, the mini redemption arc that people get when they go, "Oh man, I, I fucked up." Sorry. Yeah, say so it, it's recognizing that you fucked up. Yeah, it's the beginning of a redemption arc. Really, it's all all we want for people. Yeah. Just so okay. Um, I think yeah. I, we've done it. We broke <laughs> redemption arcs <laughs> down to its base. essentials. <laughs> um, I think it's a good place to end it. I think so too. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we did villains last time. Redemption arc seemed to be the best place to go afterwards. Yeah. So uh, like, we'll see what we do we'll next. See what we do next week. We don't have no idea. Yeah. We no idea. All right. Hey, right. have a good one and uh, kiss your dads square happy, on the lips. Happy world building. Happy world. Happy world building. <laughs> <laughs>